بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سو اسٹل وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس میمبرین سیپریشن سو اف یو ریکال فار لاسٹ ٹو ویکس وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ وی اسٹارٹیڈ ود دا میمبرین سیپریشن ٹو ویکس بیک اینڈ ان دا فسٹ ویک وی ڈسکس ریلیٹڈ ٹو میمبرین سیپریشن دے آر بیسک ٹرمینالوجیز اینڈ دا Uh, some basic stuff application in the industries uh, related to membrane separation and then in the last week uh, we have discussed about uh, membrane material uh, their synthesis and uh, uh, the various modules how membranes are actually placed in industries or how membranes are arranged because there you need large surface area you need uh, I mean large uh, number of membranes so how you have to arrange them so this we have discussed last week and at the end of that lecture we also I mean just touched how you can synthesize membrane there were various methods although we didn't go in detail but we have just touched them I um, mean that there are various methods that are used to synthesize membrane on large scale uh, so uh, by this week actually we uh, this week and next week we have to discuss some specific uh, membrane application like reverse osmosis gas separation and in electrodialysis or per uh, per vaporization but before that in this today's lecture we have to uh, i mean just look at few more terminologies related to membrane that will be helpful in the topics which we will discuss i um, mean Uh, in next few lectures as well there is uh, one journal equation which is applied for membrane systems uh, so uh, let's talk about this initially we have to start this lecture and uh, we will uh, look at one journal equation which is used commonly for membrane system especially those system which involve liquids and uh, Uh, before this equation i will just introduce you with a few more uh, terminologies few are the common things which you know from earlier like fsc classes even but uh, just to refresh your knowledge we will discuss few term like diffusion osmosis because we are discussing these terminologies for long. then we will quickly look at the mass transfer through membrane some uh, i mean general stuff related to mass transfer and uh, by ne- next lecture we will start with specific application Uh, so here we have diffusion versus osmosis so diffusion so here is diffusion versus osmosis so uh, diffusion is actually movement of solute molecules from where uh, from high concentration to low concentration so when solute molecules move from high concentration to low concentration we call it diffusion Uh, so for example uh, one example given here like if you have uh, one solvent I mean which is in large quantity large amount uh, inside a beaker and then you add some solute molecules so uh, you just add them to a specific location but uh, you know that uh, after some time they will be distributed inside whole solvent uh why they get distributed inside whole solvent because uh, at the place where you add them their concentration will be high they will be available in the large amount but in the surrounding there, there is no solute so they will just start moving from this high concentration to the other concentration where no solute is available so this phenomena is named as diffusion uh mean solute and solvent you know that solvent is something which is present in the large amount and usually when you look at the system uh, for example you have water and inside that you add some salt or some sugar uh, mean crystal so sugar or salt are behaving as a solute uh while when you look at the osmosis uh, so osmosis is somehow opposite to this or that's first of all movement of the solvent molecule so in diffusion you look that that solute molecules but osmosis describes solvent molecules movement so when solvent molecules move from low concent low to high solute concentration uh, i mean they move uh, from place where solute concentration is low to the place where solute concentration is high but here major movement is solvent 
and this movement by the way takes place through some semi permeable membrane for example uh, i mean you you know this example that uh, like you have one beaker inside this you can see that uh, there is one semi permeable membrane and semi permeable mean which allows few particle to pass through or few component to pass through and other it didn't allow for example we just consider that this membrane allow only liquid to pass through solvent to pass through while a uh, solute or this solid particle cannot pass through this membrane uh, so if you you just fill uh, two sides of this beaker one side contain large amount of solute like here you can see the, uh, for example just it is shown to you for from this you you can see that solute molecules are higher on one side as compared to other side and overall uh, i mean there is level liquid is leveled on both sides it's equal uh, but what happens after some time as this is semi permeable membrane which allows liquid to pass through and here phenomena of osmosis takes place it is the natural tendency of the solvents to move from low concentration of solute to the high concentration of solute uh, so what will happen if uh, you play, keep this system for some time you will see that naturally this liquid or solvent has traveled from this left side to the right side it 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 keep on moving although fra through this membrane this liquid can move on both sides but uh, overall if you look at the net amount so overall this solvent will move in higher amount from left side to the right side so after some time you will see that when uh, this system reach to the equilibrium uh, so overall solvent amount has reduced on the left side and it has increased on the right side uh, for example for this you can consider if uh, maybe you are confused just consider for example here uh, I mean this was half liter water or we can say okay one liter water on both side uh, of membrane I mean there was one liter and in this one liter suppose on this side you have only five gram of some solute and on the other end you have 50 gram of the solute so this is 50 gram per liter and this is 5 gram per liter so on which side concentration is higher definitely on right side concentration is higher uh, so water will start moving from this left to right and when you see that water will move from left to right as we said this is semi permeable membrane which allows only water to pass through so what will happen on the left side amount of water will start decreasing while salt will remain same for example we just considered that after one hour or after few minutes for example just i mean uh, we just say that 0.2 liter of water has moved to the other side so here how much amount will be left it is 5 over 0.8 liter on the other end but it will be like it will be now 50 gram that's salt is almost constant here and the liquid will be like now it was initially 1 liter so now it will be 1.2 liter so with this you can see that uh, overall concentration will start decreasing here it was 50 gram per liter but now when you are dividing it by 50 divided by 1 by 2 so its amount is at least reduced from 50 but on this side it has increased so uh, this phenomena will continue until your concentration is equal on both sides mean the liquid although here uh, this will get balanced or this will reach to equilibrium when small amount of liquid will be left on left side and uh, there will be high amount of liquid on right side then this will read to the equilibrium at that stage actually liquid transfer or this solvent transfer from left to right or right to the left will be equal and it will stay balanced so this this phenomena is called osmosis later on we have to discuss something uh, reverse osmosis so uh, we will look at that later but here at least for this lecture you should be aware that there is a difference between diffusion and osmosis and what is osmosis osmosis is actually movement of solvent molecules from low concentration of the salts or solute to the high concentration of solute 
Uh, so, here we are going to actually discuss something called osmotic pressure. So, before osmotic pressure you should be aware about osmosis. Now, you are aware about osmosis. What osmosis is? That moment of solvent molecule through some semi permeable membrane. So, in this example just uh, look at this that you are uh, you have uh, like one U tube uh, or something uh, like uh, test tube. Uh, so, in this so, okay, in this tube you have uh, mean one semi permeable membrane which is placed uh, at the center. So, uh, on the both ends of this uh, or both sides of this semi permeable membrane you fill pure water. I mean this is water uh, which, which may contain some other impurity, but this is same water. So, overall what you will observe suppose you fill this water on both ends and its level is same. So, based on the discussion of the last slide what do you think will water move from one side to other side? Yes, this is semi permeable membrane we just consider here for example, that this membrane only allows water to pass through. Uh, so, what will happen? Uh, water will transfer from left to right or right to the left, but this amount will be same. So, overall level of the water will stay same or will, uh, will be kept same. But what happens if you just add sugars on the one side? So you just add few some amount for example, on 2 gram of the sugar on the one side only one side of the tube. So, now what do you think on this side left end of this tube uh, amount of salt has increased. So, overall concentration on this side concentration of the solute will be higher on this left and left leg this will be higher while on right side this this mean just simple water you did not add any sugar. Now, what do you think what will happen? Phenomena of osmosis starts yes definitely from here from right side water will start traveling to left side although uh, we know that uh, through this membrane water will where water can move on both ends, but uh, as the salts or the this sugar is added on the left side. So, major or more or heavier quantity of water will travel from uh, right side to the left side and you know uh, this this transfer will continue or will keep on going until unless both side reach to the equilibrium as I have told you in the last side that uh, this continues until concentration or uh, like overall uh, mean this amount of salts per amount of this solvent becomes constant or become uh, not constant sorry become equal to the both ends. So, this water will start moving from left to the right. So, overall what you see here what you can observe that uh, water amount will start decreasing on the left end and uh, sorry on the right end and it will start increasing on the right side sorry it will start I mean decreasing on the right side and will start increasing on the left side. So, if we do not want this water to mean travel from this uh, this side where there is a pure water to the other side where there are salts or I mean sugar is added. So, what you can do uh, here you can apply some external pressure. Uh, actually, if we apply external pressure on this side only, so what will happen? Water will be pushed to the other side, and they, this this will be balanced. Suppose uh, if you were here on this end, you added the sugar, and you saw that water has started traveling from this right side to the left side. But I do not want this water to move on this side. I mean, I do not want this osmosis to take place. So what I can do? I can just apply pressure. Now this pressure should be how much? This pressure, external pressure, applied pressure should be equal to osmotic pressure. Maybe some of you will be thinking like here there is already atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is same on both ends, and in that case. I uh, mean that cannot stop this water from traveling from this end to the other end where there are there is more salt or there is high amount of the solute. Uh, so, this can be avoided if we apply some external pressure higher than like uh, I mean this atmospheric pressure. So, that pressure should be equal to the osmotic pressure. Uh, Let us uh, look at few more example and then we will define osmotic pressure, but up to here now you know that 
if we have pure water there is uh, equal transfer of maybe water molecule and level didn't change but if we add salt or sugar on one end so what will happen water will start moving from other end to the this end where you have added sugar so due to this level change on the both side amount of liquid change on the both sides uh, i mean across both side of this uh, semi permeable membrane and if you want to keep the level same you do not want this liquid to travel to the other end so what you have to do you have to apply some external pressure so in this example you can see that you have filled again on one side there is pure solvent and other side there is a solution mean that contains some solute so uh, what will happen if you just allow or if you just place this system on the atmospheric pressure you know that this solvent will move from this uh, this side major amount will or large amount will move from this side of pure solvent to the solution side uh, this phenomena is called osmosis and this takes place through some semi permeable membrane uh, and this membrane didn't allow any salt to pass through other side after some time when it reached to the equilibrium what you will see that the level on one side has increased as compared to other so here you can see this difference of the height so overall you can you can look at this that this is uh, main difference in the height and you can use this stuff to calculate the pressure difference between two ends or uh, which you will call it as osmotic pressure similarly here you can see that in this example again main the we have filled this tube with the pure water and solution i mean in this you have water with the glucose uh, so there is semi permeable membrane and through this membrane as he has shown and i have told you that through this membrane liquid this water can flow to the both sides but what do you think on which side water will move in large amount definitely on the side where there are more salts or glucose is present so if you allow it to reach to the equilibrium after equilibrium you see that there is a difference in the height uh, so again now in this system if we do not allow this water or if you do not want this water to travel to the other side through this natural phenomena of osmosis what you can do you can apply pressure on the other end and this pressure should be equal to actually osmotic pressure so when you will apply this external pressure equal to osmotic pressure as he has shown it with the symbol pi uh so that's that's i uh, mean will transfer this liquid uh, when you will apply this high pressure so it will just push liquid from this end to the other end through this membrane and uh, i mean with this you will get both are leveled I mean though both side liquid is now leveled uh so if we want to avoid this natural phenomena of osmosis what we can do we can apply pressure so that liquid didn't travel to the other end so from here you can define osmotic pressure that defined as the pressure that must be applied to the solution side so what do you see here where we are applying the pressure we are applying pressure on solution side either in this example you have seen or the last slide here you can see uh, where did we apply the pressure where we have to apply the external pressure uh, that's equal to osmotic pressure we have to apply on solution side not on the pure liquid side main solution side is the side where there is solvent as well as some amount of solute towards the I main their pure liquid was moving so that side so osmotic pressure is the pressure that is applied to the solution side to stop fluid movement or we should say that pure solvent movement by osmosis when a semi permeable membrane separates a solution from pure solvent or for example here water i mean it is not necessary always to have water but uh, you, you commonly we have to apply this system or commonly you see the examples of water due to this he has mentioned the water and here this fluid mean water then uh, so <clears throat> now you know that osmotic pressure is actually pressure which is applied externally just to avoid the movement of fluid from i mean uh, which you know from low concentration of the solvent to high concentration and that phenomena is solvent mean to avoid the movement of uh, fluids by osmosis through a semi permeable membrane uh, so osmotic pressure is actually physical quantity and wet, which depends mainly on uh, concentration and temperature of the solution so if you look at uh, various texts you will uh, you will see that uh, even ideal gas equation is used for calculation of this 
osmotic pressure so you have with that pv is equal to an rt so uh, you you know that we have seen this is pressure so that pressure can be calculated by using this equation n r t over v and n over v is actually molarity uh, this is number of moles of solute per unit volume of the solution so this is v is the volume of solution and are the number of moles so it is m r t m capital that is used for molarity and molarity is number of moles of solute per uh, unit volume of the solution. So, this P that is also equal to uh, pi just to differentiate it uh, from the pressure because here in the membrane system we have also other pressure. So, just to differentiate it we just represent it is with pi. So, pi is equal to m r t that is uh, from here you can see that this depends on concentration molarity actually involves this unit of concentration and this depends on the temperature. So, the from here you can calculate osmotic pressure. So, where we have to use actually next we are going to look at one general equation for membrane systems where you have to use this uh, I mean terminology osmotic pressure. So, now you should be aware about this osmotic pressure osmosis uh, what is diffusion. So, these are the terminologies which we have discussed so far. Uh, I mean if we if we are uh, designing any system or we are looking at some membrane separation system. So, uh, maybe you can think that we should have some some one only one equation that can give you the information about uh, about permeate amount of permeate how much permeate will be I mean uh, you will collect how much will be retentate or how how much separation takes place may be. Uh, such equation is not possible to get like uh, there is not a uh, only one equation which can provide you all the information uh, for permeation rate, solute, solute rejection, rejection mean anything which is uh, like here written it for a real separation. So, uh, you do not have any one equation or a set of equation which can predict that directly that how much will be permeate and solute rejection, but uh, uh, somehow uh, I mean which uh, th there is one equation that is used to calculate uh, some uh, flux or uh, let us look at that, but before that why it is difficult, why it is not possible. The reason behind that is uh, like you know that various system will have various properties. System mean both membrane as well as the solute or the I mean liquids which you are passing through this solvent which are passing through the membrane. For example, in the last week you have discussed that there are various membrane materials which can be used and suppose we are using some specific membrane for some specific application for example, for gas separation that gives good result, but uh, because that has some good interaction with those gas molecule which are passing through, but maybe for the liquid that is not. Uh, uh, good choice that is not good one because uh, you have hundreds of uh, various system various chemicals which which need to be separated using membrane. So, uh, to look for interaction of all membranes uh, mean our membrane material with your uh, uh, solute they have they have different interaction. Uh, so, due to this you cannot predict all this stuff by using only uh, I mean one hour set of equation, but but uh, people have developed one equation uh, that relates some of the factors which are important during this uh, membrane separation process and uh, uh, that relate or that helps us to determine the membrane permeation rate or how much will be the flux through the membrane for a pressure driven processes. Uh, this is not natural phenomena in which uh, I mean just naturally like the system which you have just seen in few slides back. So, there was natural phenomena and that was taking place on just atmospheric pressure, but if we have to apply high pressure and through those system we look at the permeation rate. So, there is one equation that is that can predict somehow the amount of permeation and uh, this is uh, derived through various steps. So, we are not going through that or uh, this not also considered as a part of your syllabus. Uh, by the way, uh, this lecture I have uh, mean brought it through various resources through some membrane book through some other uh, books. So, maybe this stuff which I have discussed so far you will not find in your textbook, but uh, last few slides uh, they are there that is um, 
uh, that stuff is available in your book. So just go through these, uh, I mean, this lecture and uh, I mean these slides and just Google it few terminologies if they are not clear, but otherwise uh, you, you will not find in your textbook. Uh, so this J is equal to del P minus del pi divided by Rm plus Rc into mu. So let's look at these uh, I mean terms, what does all all these terms in this equation mean J as we, uh, we said that this indicates membrane permeation rate. So, J is called actually membrane flux and uh, that flux mean uh, what does this membrane flux mean volumetric flow rate of some something per unit area through the membrane volumetric flow rate of suppose any liquid is passing. So, it will be like volumetric flow rate of that solvent per unit area. Uh, so, otherwise if some gas is passing, so it will be volumetric flow rate of that gas per unit area. I mean any species that is passing through the membrane that, that is called you know permeate. So, it is uh, this will give us the flux of our uh, I mean flux of our permeation rate of that mean uh, permeate stuff. Delta P is the pressure difference applied across the membrane or you also name it like transmembrane pressure. Transmembrane suppose this is our membrane and uh, that is placed in some module like uh, for example, uh, this is closed system in which here is a membrane. Uh, so, just uh, we, we are just considering one membrane uh, here and if uh, you see that through this membrane here feed is entering and through this feed then this feed. Uh, some stuff move to the other side as a permeate and other some some will leave from here as a like uh, a retentate. So, if I uh, we have a pressure definitely there will be some pressure on this side of the membrane and other will be pressure on the other side. So, if suppose we say P1 and P2, so that is the difference across the membrane. So, transmembrane pressure if you just see this terminology anywhere, so it is mean the difference in the pressure on both sides of the membrane that is called transmembrane pressure. So, delta pi uh, that is called the osmotic pressure difference across the membrane. So, uh, there will be osmotic pressure as I have told you in the last slide that this osmotic pressure you can calculate just by using simple equation of the ideal gas law. So, uh, that is I mean there will be some solute concentration on this side as well as solute concentration on the other side and if you know the temperature on both sides. So, you can uh, easily calculate pi osmotic pressure on both ends and definitely then you can calculate difference in those osmotic pressures. Uh, so, this R m is called resistance of the membrane for that solute to uh, solvent to pass through. So, uh, I mean or any solute which is passing through the membrane it depends on its application any gas or any liquid. So, uh, how much membrane uh, is resisting to this. So, hopefully, we will discuss this terminology in next uh, main lecture somehow uh, about membrane resistance. Uh, so, this R c is the resistance of the layer deposited in on the membrane surface for example, filter cake or gel. So, if something is deposited on the membrane suppose uh, some liquid want to pass through this membrane. So, if you just consider there is one pure uh, completely clean membrane and some liquid is pa want to pass through this definitely this membrane will provide some resistance to that liquid to pass through. Uh, but if this membrane uh, you are using it for long time. So, what will happen you know that some impurities are deposited on its surface. So, for example, you will you were removing some salts from water and after some time uh, clean water was passing through this membrane and salts are uh, retained on its surface that that is as a retentate. So, definitely you will be removing salts from this system you will not allow accumulation, but some amount is accumulated on the surface of membrane and that can form a uh, like cake that that's the that's he is calling as a filter cake. Uh, for example, you go for filtration and on the surface of filter some cake is deposited that is filter cake. So, similar will happen because membrane is one type of filter actually. So, here some cake is deposited or some gel like uh, I mean uh, deposition of those uh, chemical takes place. So, they will also provide some resistance to that liquid now to pass through because initially there was only the single layer of the membrane, but now on the surface of membrane now you have deposited some gel or the filter. So, its resistance is also counted. So, you can just link it with somehow like resistance of heat transfer as you know that when heat transfer is taking place through this some 
surface you know that uh, there will be resistance of conductivity uh, through this membrane for any uh, when this heat to pass through but if some salt layer is deposited on its surface so what happen they also provide some resistance so same is happening here actually uh, so their uh, heat resistance is for heat transfer and in this case here resistance is actually for uh, I mean this mass transfer uh, that is the flow of some solvent or some gas through that membrane. So, this is one general equation which predict mostly the parameters which are uh, I mean which affect uh, the permeation rate or the flux although in this e equation we, we cannot see somehow uh, something about the interaction of uh, those molecules or those solvent or gases with the membrane material, but this gives us information with respect to the pressures and also resistance uh, which, uh, which are uh, I mean uh, which will affect this flux when this separation takes place or uh, somehow these uh, resistances, resistances are actually uh, including uh, that interaction I mean uh, because if this membrane may be that will provide resistance to all of solvent this will be different. So, uh, this is uh, somehow accommodating that factor and pressure across the membrane is accommodating the factor for this flux. So, for example, uh, uh, this was uh, if you have some some liquid like there was a water and we have some salts inside this, the, this uh, will be valid, but for example, this whole equation will be actually valid. You have to consider each and every terminology and mu by the way, uh, this is uh, for what viscosity. So, that is for uh, viscosity of mean this system uh, overall this will be like uh, your solvent which is passing through this system. So, for example, if uh, your membrane is ex exposed to only pure water, uh, so for example, we say that water is only passing pure solvent is only water and then what will be your equation or how this equation will change. For example, if uh, you have only pure water. so. Uh, what do you think uh, I mean for example, we consider a membrane system in which there is a pure water and you place just semi permeable membrane as uh, for example, you have seen in one of the example where we started that there were a tube and on there was uh, semi permeable membrane in between and there was pure solvent water on the both ends. So, in this case will there will be any osmotic pressure? Are change in the osmotic pressure, this difference in the osmotic pressure, no. For example, this is pure water, so it did not contain any salt. So, when there are no salt, so n number of moles of the dilute will be 0. So, based on that, your uh, mean if, if even salts are present and they are equal on both ends or both sides, but here as we are considering pure solvent, so we just consider there are no solvent, pure uh, no solute, no uh, mean salt here. So, in that case your pi as I told you that is equal to n over v r t. So, this n over v r t n is 0 for in this case pure solvent because you are using there is no solute. So, pi will be 0 on and there will be change in pi that will be 0. So, this term will be omitted. Uh, but uh, definitely there we just considered that there is water and there is a difference in the pressure. So, that will be available there delta p. R m resistance of the membrane for this solvent. So, definitely this solvent want to pass for example, water. So, it, this membrane will provide some resistance. So, this terminology will be considered. What about R c or filter cake or gel? Because you are passing pure solvent through this system. So, uh, there will be no gel formation, no filter cake. So, this terminology will also be omitted. So, overall your equation in this case will be equal to J is equal to delta p over r m into mu. Okay. So, this will be equation when you will have only pure solvent. So, here more important will be like resistance of membrane for that solvent as well as pressure difference between these two ends and at given temperature pressure condition your viscosity of the system will affect this uh, I mean j or uh, mean flux. So, overall from here you can see that uh, in 
uh, this this was for pure solvent but just consider it for like solutes are present in your system so uh, this equation showed that transmembrane pressure must exceed the osmotic pressure for flow to occur what does this mean if you look at this equation for example if we want the flux if we want the permeate rate uh, mean if we want some amount of flux so in order to get that amount what you have to do uh, you see if you look at these parameter of this equation so definitely if we have to get this j this delta p should be higher than this delta pi that osmotic pressure difference i mean pressure difference across the membrane should be higher than this otherwise this I mean phenomena of uh, permeation will not take place and you will not get any permeate so overall this pressure difference across the membrane should be high uh, than this osmotic pressure uh, if we know the osmotic pressure and the pressure on the both sides of membrane so then we we can apply pressure on the one end one side so with the help of this more flux will take place and amount of these i um, mean permeate will be higher so from here you can get the idea that if uh, pressure across the membrane pressure difference across the membrane is higher more flux will take place uh, more uh, means uh, no more component for example solvent will pass through and you will get more amount of that material uh, then uh, overall you can see that uh, there is a resistance of membrane we we, we, we can control it uh, by using or by choosing different materials for example if you choose such material which has good affinity for one of the solvent which has to pass through this so this resistance will be less for example for heat transfer what do you do uh, you you select the material which has high thermal conductivity so here we will we will select such material uh, of the membrane which which has uh, which allows large amount of that one one of the component to pass through at the end of this lecture i will do, uh, tell you about this selection of the material how you have to do or on which factor it depends but uh, that that will allow us i mean suppose for example it's uh, uh, amount i uh, sorry its value if its value is low uh, rm its resistance is low so in that case definitely i uh, mean flux will be higher its resistance should be low and uh, if you look at this rc now I mean i at well uh, before i go to uh, rc this mu viscosity so if viscosity is lower definitely high flux and if viscosity is higher large value so flux will be low because uh, that's another resistance for the liquid or for solvent to pass through some system uh, so viscosity of this if it's viscosity uh, for example if you want to, water to pass through some membrane so that, that can pass easily because it, it is uh, less viscous for example membrane has good interaction with that but at the same time if you have honey or something which is more viscous like honey so uh, in that case it is difficult you have to apply maybe high pressure to pass through uh, this membrane so that becomes difficult so that should have low viscosity now look at rc I mean this uh, cake factor or you can say due to filter cake or gel formation uh, so this resistance is due to formation of filter cake or formation of gel uh, when the concentration of macromolecules on the membrane surface exceed their solubility this give rise to a precipitation I mean why this takes place i why the, this filter uh, cake is formed actually uh, macromolecule large molecule for example we consider these sugar molecules which are present inside water or I mean any any mean other molecule uh, which are present in water as impurity or uh, you you can consider as a solute so if uh, the concentration of those molecule on membrane surface exceed their solubility because they were initially soluble in the water but as water is just leaving from this system I mean when you are filtering this water uh, so this solute concentration will start rising and then this uh, solute concentration is higher now they will start accumulating on the surface of membrane and they make like filter cake uh, other i um, mean next phenomena due to materials in the process feed that adsorb on the membrane surface producing an additional barrier to the solvent sometime it is not necessary that they they get uh, like uh, salt amount uh, precipitates out from the solvent uh, sometime actually solute molecule which are present inside the system along with the solvent they can adsorb maybe membrane surface has such 
uh, affinity for them uh, that they, they will adsorb on the surface. Now, when they are adsorb on the surface, they will be definitely providing extra resistance for the solvent to pass through this membrane. So, due to this, this phenomenon takes place. So, uh, what do you think in order to avoid this resistance or this resistance if we want to avoid it or if we want to keep it smallest what you should have actually it is R C value as it is in denominator of the equation. So, you know that its value will be lowest smallest one. So, what we can do we can clean the surface of the membrane after some time. So, maybe if uh, some of you have membrane system at home for drinking water purpose. So, uh, you have to clean the membrane for uh, after some time membrane cleaning is necessary. Uh, why we go for membrane cleaning actually to remove all this stuff which is accumulated on the surface of membrane because uh, that resist although membrane resist our liquid to pass through, but at the same time they are also providing some extra resistance which we have to stop. Uh, so, uh, the separation of the solute by the membrane give rise to increased concentration of that solute at the membrane surface. When this separation is takes place later we will look at this uh, although up to here we have seen that through osmosis actually liquid will pass from side of low solute to the high solute, but actually when you are going for reverse osmosis and all these other main membrane phenomena uh, you push the water and with the help of that pressure actually we pass water opposite to the osmosis system. So, in that case actually when water leaves from somewhere, so salt or solute concentration start increasing on the membrane surface. So, when this is start increasing on the membrane surface uh, that phenomena is named as actually concentration polarization. When salts are there, they, they are deposit on the surface and they, they, their concentration rises. So, that is called concentration polarization this phenomena. Which phenomena? I mean uh, the phenomena in which there is increased concentration of the solute on the membrane surface that is named as concentration polarization. So, when concentration polarization takes place actually uh, it delays or it reduce the amount of uh, uh, I mean permeate through the membrane. So, we have to clean the membrane. So, uh, more uh, solvent can pass through the membrane and you can get good separation or a large amount of permeate. So, this was uh, about this journal equation from here you can see that if you have to increase uh, uh, just now look at this equation, this equation have accommodated a uh, lot of stuff mean if uh, for example, you are using or you are selecting the membrane system. So, you want to increase the permeate because uh, in this case by the way in this example which we have discussed here permeate is uh, your desired product. So, uh, most of the time most of the time permeate is your desired product sometime retentate is even desired product, but uh, in that case definitely even if you are separating something and you want to keep retentate as your desired product. So, you will want that uh, most of the stuff which you want to get rid of should pass through the membrane. So, in any case uh, I mean if you have to increase its flux. So, your pressure across the membrane pressure difference across the membrane should be higher as it will be higher. So, more flux will take place and at least this should be higher than the osmotic pressure. Uh, then I uh, mean uh, you are selecting the material of membrane. So, that material should provide or should give uh, less resistance to the uh, solvent to pass through as well you should avoid the deposition of cake or uh, this gel formation on the membrane surface. So, how you can avoid you have to clean it uh, with the passage of time because it will uh, start resisting. So, from these parameter as well at the end there was last parameter about viscosity. So, your liquid should be less viscous which you want to pass through this membrane. So, uh, in in the case of uh, this liquid how you, you can reduce the viscosity may be by increasing the temperature. Although with this we will have some other problem in the membrane maybe we will discuss later in next lectures, but uh, at least with that you can reduce the viscosity and due to reduction in viscosity this flux will increase. So, these are the general parameters which you should keep in mind when you are designing a membrane system uh, that pressure difference, uh, selection of membrane material, uh, resistance due to cake formation and viscosity of the membrane are somehow important parameter which can give you a bit clear idea about some system. Uh, although again here if you uh, design some system. So, 
the because the you are not accommodating all the parameter of interactions and uh, that so you you can you can see uh, some uh, some of uh, maybe you were expecting more flux but you are getting less flux so there can be some other problem inside that but this this is somehow close to the real systems so let's look at the mass transfer through membranes suppose uh, you have to apply membranes so membrane surfaces which are applied for various applications so uh, they are based on actually laboratory data for for example you are going to use membrane for any separation so first of all you have to run some preliminary experiment on lab scale so you can get the idea about all the stuff which we have discussed so far in last few slides so uh, so that membrane should perform well as per your expectation or it should go give good separation as well as good flux and should work for longer time uh, so I mean because both the driving force and uh, permeability permeance through the membrane mean you know that uh, permeance was permeability over thickness of the membrane uh, they depend on the mechanism of transport it is important to understand the nature of transport uh, through the membrane uh, when you are going to select the separation process what does this point mean actually you know you have discussed various membrane types last week so we saw that there were porous membrane there was dense membrane and uh, among porous membrane there were different types so uh, among all that stuff actually if we are going to design some membrane system so uh, that depends uh, on the mechanism of transport uh, how transport of some liquid or some gas takes place through the membrane so we should be aware about that and uh, when you are going to select the system and this transport actually is the mass transfer through the membrane so as you know that membrane can be microporous me, uh, mean our dense membrane which you have discussed that some are microporous microporous membrane will have actually pore size greater than the microporous among microporous you have seen three type of membrane there were micro ultra and nano filtration membrane so if pore size are higher than their range so they are considered among macroporous membrane uh, so usually these macroporous membrane they are used for as a support if you remember i have told you that uh, mean across the membrane pressure is high so in order to sustain that pressure we discussed that uh, usually dense membrane or microporous membrane uh, that's just i uh, mean small layer but uh, that is supported with some other support which were which are usually microporous membrane they are not used like they didn't give any separation they are just used for separation or supporting the membrane thin layer because if uh, thin membrane of dense or microporous membrane is exposed to uh, high pressure difference this will rupture in order to avoid that or give uh, i mean um, a strength to that membrane i mean we go for macroporous membrane and uh, macroporous membrane are just used as a support they are not active layer they are not uh, being used for separation purpose they are just being used for uh, i mean support this we have discussed in detail in last uh, week so if you have any confusion just go back to the, those slides of uh, i mean uh, membrane types and there you can see this stuff uh, so uh, why we apply by the way greater pressure difference this you have seen in last slide to achieve high flux we apply the greater pressure difference across the membrane so when you want to apply greater pressure difference so in order to avoid uh, the rupture of membrane what you have to do you have to just uh, support your membrane active layer on some uh, large pore size membrane so that will be just being used as a uh, sport that is not like active layer it will just definitely allow anything to pass through this which have been separated from active layer uh, so there are two types of majorly membranes as uh, we know that this is uh, microporous and dense membrane so we have to look at mass transfer through these membrane because i am telling you these microporous are i mean membrane which with high pore size so uh, that's not being used for separation that is being used only as a support so here we will discuss uh, i mean mass transfer through microporous or dense membrane so microporous if you remember the i mean from last week so microporous or porous is the same terminology and dense or non porous is the same terminology so here let us look at these porous or microporous membrane uh, so if you look at this here we have we are shown with the different uh, I mean system by the way this is from your textbook for, I mean half a page you can read through this uh, I will just explain it here so 
overall uh, there are four systems shown to you here uh, they are actually porous as well as uh, I mean uh, micro porous and some I mean dense membrane system is shown here and we have to discuss based on this. So, if you look at this first uh, through first uh, I mean membrane uh, A system. Uh, you see there are very large pores between the uh, membrane uh, structure inside membrane structure very large pore and they allow anything to pass through. So, however, ho ho overall in this uh, I mean example you can see that anything can pass through this membrane pores and by the way this uh, membrane uh, surface has does not interaction with any of these. Uh, so, it will allow everything to pass through and this we call that bulk flow will take place through these pores. When bulk flow is taking place, so bulk flow is actually the flow of everything on the large uh, I mean volume uh, anything uh, which is coming inside that system that will pass through these pores and they are actually macro porous membranes. So, these membrane no separation will take place because they allow anything to pass through there is no separation. So, next uh, for example, in B case uh, you can see so in A case there is no separation. So, these are not membrane which we are looking for. We are looking for something where some separation can take place. So, in next case you can see that this is diffusion through pores. So, here diffusion is taking place through pores some uh, some of these uh, I mean things are passing through the membrane. Uh, so, overall in this uh, you can see that pore size are still uh, I mean large and uh, anything can pass through, but membrane material has interaction or uh, this is affinity, uh, this has potential for some of the component which it allows to pass through, other they can be retained on the surface of membrane. So, through these membranes somehow separation can take place and these are again I um, mean um, micro porous membrane. In micro, uh, micro porous membrane you have seen that there were micro ultra and nano filtration membrane and some of uh, ultra filtration membrane they have very large pore size. So, this can be example of that, but that is used for separation mainly based on pore size as well as somehow with interaction with the membrane. Then there is uh, other this porous membrane which has very small pore size. So, based on this membrane here actually restricted diffusion through the pores takes place restricted mean it allows only some of the molecule which has lower size or lower pores uh, mean dia as compared to this pore size they will pass through this, but other with higher pore size cannot pass through this. So, here also good separation will take place. So, here molecule larger than the pores are prevented from diffusing through the membrane. Definitely, if we, uh, they are larger they cannot pass through this membrane and they will be retained on its surface either it uh, retentate while other which pass through this membrane will leave as a permeate. So, this special case is highly desirable because definitely when you are looking for microporous membrane you want the separation based on pore size which we have discussed in last week that these are membrane which are uh, which uh, are making separation based on uh, pore size or uh, pore diameter and uh, they are this is referred as size exclusion or the sieving size exclusion mean exclude exclude some size which is larger than this pore size and include or to allow pass through some uh, pore, some molecule which are smaller in diameter. So, this is called also sieving, sieving you know that sieving is the phenomenon in which you just uh, se separate something based on pore uh, size uh, something which has uh, large diameter from that sieve pore. So, that will not pass through, but if diameter is less so it will pass through the membrane. And the last D here you can see that solution diffusion membrane through dense membrane I told you that usually they do not have any pores or if pores they will be of very small size, uh, but through these membrane actually how I mean separation takes place diffusion diffusion through the membrane will take place and uh, we have discussed this phenomena in last uh, lecture in uh, last week. So, uh, through this diffusion actually separation takes place now this membrane has good diffusion or it allows some of the component to pass through and others will not pass through this membrane and separation will take place, but this is not on pore size this is pure based on the affinity of membrane for some component and it is I mean uh, it is uh, resistance towards some components or some of the molecules. 
this uh, through this was through I um, mean porous membrane but if we look at the this through non porous membrane the D case which we have discussed uh, by the way in your textbook he has discussed after this uh, various phenomena of uh, this interaction of as I told you in this case B case that interaction of uh, these molecules with the membrane surface even they are passing through the pores uh, then diffusion of the liquid diffusion of the gas through I um, mean these pores uh, so he has discussed uh, those topics in detail that is not part of your syllabus so do not go through all those equations due to this I have just skipped all that stuff uh, which we do not need or they are not part of our syllabus and we do not have any also the time to go through all the, that stuff those derivations. Uh, so, this just you should know that how mass transfer takes place through the membranes uh, just general phenomena which I have explained here. And uh, through non porous membrane again same mean mass transfer through non porous membrane or dense membrane uh, they are we also mean look at them as solid membranes because they do not have most of the time they do not have pores. So, here predominant phenomena in membrane separation uh, or this phenomena is commonly involved in reverse osmosis, gas permeation or per vaporation. Uh, I mean when we will look at these in next lecture. So, you will see that most of the time these separation or this membrane application involve actually uh, non porous membrane. So, all uh, both liquid as well as vapors can pass through those membrane and uh, I mean separation takes place. Uh, as indicated in figure 14.6 D part in the last slide I have shown you that this is through non porous membrane. Gas or liquid species actually absorb on the feed side of the membrane and diffuse through the membrane and then desorb on permeate side. If you look at this here you can see uh, this is the feed side by the way uh, I mean from here I mean this gas is entering and uh, or even if you can consider it as a liquid or gas anything. So, on the feed side they, they, they get dissolved or they get diffused through this side they pass through the membrane and leave on the permeate side. So, anything which will not pass through that will be leaving as a retentate from here. Uh, so, same point is explained here. So, here liquid diff uh, by the way here when diffusion through the membrane takes place you know that uh, I mean uh, diffusions of gases as well as as we said that they, they are apl applied for gas as well as liquid system. So, diffusion can take place for both gases and the liquids. So, liquid diffusivities are several orders of the magnitude less than gas diffusivity. So, if you look at some component for example, it is the diffusivity. Uh, I mean uh, that that exists in the form of liquid or that exists in the form of vapor some same component. So, it is diffusivity when it exists in the gas phase that will be higher as compared to this diffusivity inside uh, when it exists in the form of liquids. So, suppose for example, you just consider this solid membrane and through this something uh, is passing in the form of a liquid. So, its diffusivity will be less as compared to the gas. So, gases diffusivities are higher. Uh, so, diffusivities of solutes in the solid are a few order of the magnitude less than diffusivities in the liquid. Uh, for example, we are considering any solute uh, uh, less considered as uh, like you have a uh, sugar. So, sugar crystal you dissolve somewhere. So, uh, solutes in the solids uh, for example, you want to separate those through the solids uh, you pass through this solid membrane. So, their diffusivities uh, sorry diffusivities are less as compared to diffusivities of the liquid. Uh, by the way one of the student has asked me a question that uh, uh, sir I mean I always you, you discussed that something permeate is our desired product and uh, retentate is just rejected stuff. So, uh, is there any case in which you can have uh, I mean a retentate as your desired product and permeate is uh, your undesired product. So, that is possible. Uh, th this will depend on the application where you are applying uh, this one example here you can consider for example, there, there were uh, salts inside the liquid and you want to separate those salts and liquid and you are using membrane. So, as you can see here that uh, diffusivity of the liquid through membrane is easy or more as compared to the diffusivity of this solid and then there is something liquid and solid. So, you can see that gases can diffuse easily through some stuff as compared to this liquid. Uh, so, based on all these 
things we have to design our membrane system that we can get easy separation and anything which can easily pass through the membrane uh, that is uh, just leaving as a permeate and other which is left over is uh, retentate. So, that that can be like it is not necessary that permeate is a uh, mean to a desired product sometime your uh, uh, that can be desired product that is something called uh, retentate. Uh, so, this difference between diffusivities in gases and solids are enormous and uh, they, they affect I mean through solids and uh, gases if you compare. So, uh, I mean they are uh, I mean large uh, for example, here we consider one example of water. Suppose water uh, I mean is diffused through some solid, some liquid and some gas. I mean this is one component we are considering water at 1 atm and 25 degree C and its diffusivity if we look and in these units. So, just look at this water vapor in air suppose water I mean that is in the form of uh, I mean uh, vapor and that is diffusing through the air. So, its value is given here 0 0.25 and if it you consider these uh, water vapors and they are just passing through this uh, I mean ethanol liquid. So, you see this was gas through diffusion through gas. So, next diffusion through the liquid. So, that same component same species, but uh, now if you look at diffusion through that liquid. So, it is the uh, mean value has decreased and if you look at this dissolved water in cellulose state now it has to pass through some solid. So, uh, through some solid its diffusivity is even less. Uh, so, overall from here you can see that uh, some same component is passing either through gas or liquid or uh, I mean solid is diffusivity is decreasing. So, membranes are solid you know that anything which is passing through these membranes so its diffusion will be the lowest one. Now, this same if you compare this same water uh, I mean uh, if it is in the form of liquid or in the form of vapor. So, uh, this diffusivity will be different. So, here as he said dissolved water. So, it is the water as a liquid uh, this diffusivity is less, uh, but if we want to I uh, mean just vaporize the water like if we do in per, uh, per vaporization we vaporize something some components. So, actually that helps us to uh, increase the diffusivity through the membrane. So, that will be at least higher than this. Uh, so, your more permeate will pass through the membrane. Uh, another example for example, small molecule uh, fare better than large molecule for diffusion. Also, it depends on the molecule size for as you know that most of the time membranes are the solids. So, we, we will look or we will compare the diffusivity through the solids or diffusivity in the solid of various uh, molecule size. For example, uh, from one book polymer handbook you have diffusivities of various hydrocarbons through the low density polyethylene. Uh, uh, this membrane is uh, made up of low density polyethylene and at 25 degrees C you are uh, uh, I mean operating it and if you look at various uh, I mean chemical. So, it is their diffusion through this membrane is different. For example, here you have helium, uh, then there is hydrogen, then there is nitrogen and propane. So, overall you, you can look at this that uh, if you are increasing the size from here hydrogen to nitrogen and then propane, you can see that they have uh, I mean high uh, sorry their diffusivity is decreasing at this as this uh, mean mo molecule size is increasing. Uh, so, based on this for example, the question which I was discussing that one student has asked suppose now you have to separate these hydrogen, nitrogen and propane. So, which membrane you will select or which one will have high diffusivity? Uh, you know that out of all these if you look at various main membrane stuff definitely they will follow the same trend. Uh, by the way, there here this helium has one exception although this uh, is uh, molecule which is larger than hydrogen, but this has uh, mean high diffusion as compared to even hydrogen, but other I mean most most of them are uh, most of them follow this I mean this trend that as their size keep on increasing their diffusion will become difficult and their diffusivity is decreased. So, as I was talking about this that for example, you have to I mean separate this mixture now and your desired product for example, is uh, 
like propane. So what do you have to do? You have to select uh, such material which, uh, which just reject propane and allow these two to pass through. Why? Because they have good diffusivity and uh, all among all material propane will have low diffusivity. Most of the time its diffusivity will be low. So now our desired product is propane and we are not allowing main propane to pass through this membrane. We are just stopping it because uh, that that's retentate and that's our desired product. Because if we apply or we bring any other membrane which allow propane easily to pass through definitely at the same time hydrogen and nitrogen will also slip through that membrane because they have they will have even also good diffusivities through the membrane so it all depends on your application and the systems and the components which you have which you are separating so which type of membrane you have to select and either retentate or i mean other uh, uh, permeate is your desired product uh, so again also uh, related to this topic your book has discussed various topics uh, and lot of equation related to the I mean uh, uh, passage of uh, gas, passage of liquid through the membranes, uh, non-porous membrane and then there are something called uh, cascades of membrane are discussed. So I uh, just skip all that stuff, just go through this uh, half page related to non-porous membrane and then uh, by next lecture we will uh, start with the next application of the membrane. We do not have to mean uh, study all those equation and uh, that stuff related to mass transfer in detail. Uh, so up to here uh, we, we have discussed today uh, some basic uh, terminologies or revised those like diffusion, osmosis, what is osmotic pressure, so how osmotic pressure is important, uh, what is the major equation or general equation which accommodates a lot of parameters for membrane separation, so that is the flux equation and uh, how flux is affected due to uh, applied pressure across the membrane or transmembrane pressure as well as osmotic pressure. Uh, due to the membrane material and uh, also due to formation of gel or the cake on the surface of membrane how flux is effective we have discussed in that in detail and then uh, at the end I mean we have uh, gone through some mass transfer through the membrane we have seen that mass transfer through the porous membranes takes place through the pores and uh, I uh, mean that is size exclusion process, other is uh, through dense membrane that is diffusion through the membrane and mo in most of the application uh, like in reverse osmosis, gas permeation and per vaporation we, we have looked at dense membrane will be used. So through dense membrane actually diffusivity of various components is different. So as membrane are the solid material and through these membrane gases can definitely easily diffuse through while liquid it will be difficult for the liquid to pass through as we have seen with the example of the water uh, while other uh, mean if even we are looking at the gases so if you keep on increasing the molecule size so diffusivity keep on decreasing so keeping all these points in the mind definitely then you design your or you select your membrane material and also select that either permeate or retentate will be your desired product uh, thank you so much